ladies and gentlemen, this whole discussion about repatriating and ownership, to my opinion, goes much further than only about objects only. The whole discussion is about borders, about nations, about nationalism, about fatherland, about patria. I think we need something else. I think we need a new approach. Ladies and gentlemen, I live in the city of Rotterdam, and it's the city where Erasmus was born. His motto was, Vovis terra patria, the whole world is my fatherland. And I think ownership indeed goes beyond the object. And to me, all cultural objects have no single owner. They belong to the world. They are world heritage. However, in terms of ownership, of course, the place and the context of the objects is relevant. But to me, far more important, and I'd like to bring that into the discussion, far more important here is ownership on a completely different level, and that level is language. The Rijksmuseum, I used to be the general director, as said, the Rijksmuseum has been working on colonial terminology. This was world news last year, and it has been covered in newspapers in December 2015. And let me quote the New York Times. I quote, the, New the Rijksmuseum is in the process of removing language that could be considered offensive from digitized titles and descriptions of artworks in its collections. Words that Europeans once routinely used to describe other cultures or peoples like Negro, Indian or Dwarf will be replaced with less racially charged terminology. End of quote. This is the first time a European museum has made such a concerted effort to change the titles and descriptions of its holdings. And until now, in the Rijksmuseum, we found over 150 descriptions with the word Negro in them. But there are other words indeed, and many more, like, for instance, Hottentot. It's a name given by the Dutch to the Khoi people in South Africa. In Dutch, the means Hottentot means stutter, and stutter, and it's a very insulting word. Uh, to be true, and it's really important to change that, talking about ownership. This was part of a larger movement within the museum to update the vision on presenting colonial art and colonial history. Indeed, it's a very contested story, as you already noticed, with many views and with many perceptions and with several layers at the same time. Ownership and language, to me, go hand in hand, and since language is a living thing like history, it's moving all the time. The question is if historians and or art historians could be the final judges. They, it's the question if they could be the court of justice for history at all, anno 2016. The Rijksmuseum started relabeling and rewriting Eurocentric vocabulary not to give objects back, but to give back ownership, to make these objects accessible and relevant to a global audience. I think that is what it's about. Since art objects indeed are world heritage and never tell one single story, but always several stories at the same time, European as well as African, Asian or whatever region of this world. So for objects with a common history, and most of these objects with a colonial background have a common history, the Rijksmuseum already gave back ownership, not to countries, but more important, we gave it back to people. And I think that is what it's all about. Thank you very much.